Dear audiences, welcome to our Dorado Retreat House Real Life Stories Radio. It's our honor to give you our most sincere greetings in the love of Jesus Christ, Mother of Perpetual Help. May the love and peace of the Holy Trinity be with you and with your family. This program is run by Father John Liu Ngoquin, who is one of Hanoi Redemptorists, CSSR, and his Dorado Retreat House. This radio is a broadcast with the purpose of sharing our experiences, discoveries, and confirmation about the problems related to mental illness, spiritual illness, vocational discernments, religious life, marriage life, and the ways that God has been leading us. New stories are broadcast and updated continuously on radio and website SV. C O N G G I A O dot net at 9 p.m. on Sundays. We hope it will bring you to the new perspectives, new hope, new directions, and new saving road about human histories, illness, sorrows, and healings. Especially, these stories are really useful for those who are suffering from the same problems that we have experienced and healed. Dear audience, in this broadcast, we would like to send you the story "Sex World in Me." That's the story of a young girl who was immersed in the sex world at a very early age. She had to live painfully in that dark world. She had a desire to be suddenly liberated. How was her problem resolved? Please listen to the following broadcast with the reading voice of Miss Hong. I was born and grew up in the poor countryside of Lao Cai Province. It is the dry and sunny weather and barren land that have turned me from a passionate and emotional person into a cold and emotionless one. Or is there any another reason behind? Well, like many other children, I dreamed from innocent, joyful childhood. But I only saw the dark corners during my childhood, filled with sorrow and pain. One of those terrible dark corners is the sex world in me. A strange sound made the sleeping girl suddenly wake up. Her eyes widened, and she saw her father lying on her mother's body. Seeing her mother moans and gasp, she was about to throw him out because she thought her father was hurting her mother. She had a feeling of sneeze when they glanced at her. Then they covered themselves with a blanket. The girl saw them, but she didn't know what her parents were doing. Only the strange sounds were left in her head. Since then, the sex world covered me, and the subsequent memory ties me up. It was the family that taught me the first lesson about sex, and showed me the most complete sexual drama. As a disappointment. My parents habitually did exercise with each other. The answers that my parents gave me when I asked what they were doing, even when I closed my eyes, the image still showed up in my head, and those sounds still penetrated my mind. To avoid that terror, every night I went to the neighbor's house so that my parents could exercise happily together. The sexual world made me both frightened. And very curious, I didn't realize when it started sucking into my mind. I neither dared to laugh, to talk, nor to play with any boys. Perhaps that was the reason my friends considered me a girl with a pure soul. But they didn't know that I burned myself in the thirst of sex that my mind couldn't win. I hated my father, and despite my mother. Because they have smashed my innocent life as a child, which they should have enjoyed, into a pile of lust, I became a slave to sexuality. I never talked to anyone. I was like an autistic child. 
I was scared, and I considered sex as the most distressing thing. But I could not understand why I was always wrapped into it. I could not concentrate on anything else because my thought was always towards these things. When I was sad or sad, it controlled me, and I had no way to escape. Sometimes I couldn't fight the temptation, so I masturbated. And just like that, even when I was in the great crowd, that I still had to witness my parents' sexual behaviors. I read in that world without way of liberation. The only thing I could do was to hide into dark corners and cry. I hear the sounds of a sinner. Deep inside the dark memory, I still yearn for something from God. I decide to be a nun. The sex was always tight ring that could not escape. But I still decided to follow that call. I went to a religious order in Saigon. After two weeks of studying my case, the sisters there sent me to Hanoi for meditation with the guidance of Father Jones as the spiritual director. Coming to the Zero Dawn Retreat House, I was instructed by Father John to pray and do homework, and that memory rises strongly when I face God. Father John had me face with my sexual world, but I tried to escape it. I was scared. I was afraid of being embarrassed when people knew about me. That memory made me hurt, and that guilt memory made me unable to forgive myself. When I grew down, all my emotion reappeared in me. I hated myself and hated those who caused my injury as well. Even the memories of my brother reappeared in me. I was horrified when I recalled this memory. Every night, my brother did this to me. He waited for me to fall asleep, and he hugged me tightly. He kissed me. He touched my body. But at that moment, I just thought maybe adults are like children, so they do it. I was scared of that dirty night. I was painful, really painful. I just wanted to die. I felt myself so dirty. I did not dare to receive communion. A giant darkness covered me. I used to think that all the memories would be the past. And I told myself to never tell anyone else about it. I would hide it at the deepest corners of my soul. But facing with God, who is mercifully omnipotent, I couldn't hide it. Only by facing myself directly and open that dark doorway, that the light of God can enter. I wrote down what was in my head, not just once, but many times. Oh, I saw, I heard, I did, I felt the movies, the pictures that had gone through my mind. Father Jones made me write and draw them all until I no longer remembered anything at all. Facing my memory, I just wanted to scream and break them all. I couldn't accept myself as a thin, dirty person, and I hated all those who hurted me. Every time I was controlled, I recalled the words that Father John taught me: "Conscious what comes in the mind and gives them all to God." I did so, and I felt myself peaceful. Coming to Father John, my view of sex has been changed. Previously, it was disgust. Now I know it's worth being appreciated because it is a gift God gave human beings. Father trained me to pray, taught me the lessons about human sex, about humans being, so that I could have a correct and better understanding of them. Father taught me the principle of sexual activity, especially the way to resolve and control it. Thus, my fear of sex had faded away, and the criminals involved in it disappeared. And it was here, the other wretched house. That I met people who were much more miserable than me. I realized that my pain was much smaller than what they had experienced. Many people were brutally abused. 
hurted, and even harmed by their beloved one. So many drunk people are plunging into the dead end of sex. They immerse themselves in the scenes to satisfy themselves. Though many times they tried, promised themselves, or wanted to escape, that they could not escape. Many priests had to give up their aspirations because of their sexual difficulties in religious life. I'm lucky and happy to see Father John. Perhaps it is a gift from God for me. Thank to Him, I have better understand about myself and those who hurted me. He also taught me how to forgive them. The more I pray, the more fading those family become, and the more I love myself. Experience forgiveness for myself. I don't for a full love in Christ. Now for me, sex is no longer a haunting and scary thing, but it is a precious gift that God has put in me, and He always wants us to voluntarily save for God's kingdom. Although that memory could not be erased by a scar that never healed, but it was in that scar that God had lifted and freed me. Sex helps me to live a happier life, and that is a key for me to explore the path to God. Well, not only the girl is a story, but perhaps many of us are suffering from the trauma in the past or the pain that our descendants are victims of. So, through this story, we wish all fathers and mothers to watch over our sexual acts, not to turn them into tie balls that crush our children's lives. At the same time, those who have accidentally fallen in that world bravely face it and push it out, not only once but many times, so that you also have freedom, innocence, and peace.